Okay, g'day all, welcome to another video. So today we're doing a little bit of a uh, little bit more direct 3D. We're going to call a function, which is going to create three really important objects for us. It's going to create a device, a context, and a swap chain. So we've looked a little bit at the swap chain last time uh, with our swap chain description. The device is used to create resources like your shaders and your render target. And the context is used to render things. So that does most of the drawing. And the function that we're calling today is uh, Direct3D11 Create Device and Swap Chain. Okay, this is the function just here, Create Device and Swap Chain. So the first parameter is uh, the adapter. We can put Null here to use the default adapter. Uh, you can use other adapters if you've got more than one adapter in your uh, machine. Uh, but the thing is that you've got to create your device separately. Yeah, so there's a different set of steps to doing that. Yeah, you create these objects separately if you want to use a different adapter. Um, just have a look at, have a, have a Google of DirectX Enumerate Adapters and you should be, you should be filled with beautiful information on how to do that. The uh, next parameter is the driver type. Okay, so we're going to be using hardware. And D3D driver type hardware. So you've got a few options here. You can use a warp driver if you want. Uh, it's not that simple though. That doesn't run as a warp driver. A warp... Well, first of all, the hardware driver means you use the graphics card. Um, if you've got a dedicated graphics card in your machine, a graphics card is generally going to give you a lot more performance than, say, a software driver or a warp driver. Um, the software drivers are for if you've written your own software driver, which, you know, I haven't. <laughs> And a warp driver is a if you've got a device or if you want your CPU to mimic the latest DirectX, then you would use a warp driver. So this is um, the CPU would emulate uh, the latest graphics card hardware. So it would be emulating, so it would be very slow, but at least you'd have the complete DirectX set of functionality available to you. So that's what a warp driver is for. Uh, but for today, we're going to be using hardware. You'll almost always use hardware. Um, you might use warp just to test out a few things whilst you're developing, but usually you want hardware. Um, the next parameter, H module, that can just be null. That's if you've if you've written your own graphics uh, driver, you can supply a pointer to that H module there. So if you've got software here, maybe you've got your own driver. Um, yeah, that's what this next parameter is for. It's an H module pointer to the thing that you made. <laughs> We haven't written a driver here today, so uh, we'll just put null as that. Okay, the next parameter is the flag. So you've got a few options here. I like uh, I like two of them particularly. So we'll go D3D11 uh, and create device. Uh, what are they? Single threaded. Here we go. We want D3D11 single threaded. Uh, you can all these together as well. And the other one that we want is uh, D3D11 um, create device and B. G, this one, yeah. Um, okay, so by default, uh, a lot of DirectX works in a thread safe way, but maintaining thread safety is costly on performance. So you've got to, you know, have critical sections and juggle mutexes and that sort of thing. Uh, so if you're making a single threaded application, you can supply this flag and DirectX won't worry about any thread synchronization primitives. And maybe you'll get a bit of performance, maybe. Or if you're making a multi-threaded application, then you obviously wouldn't use this flag. And uh, maybe you can use multi-threads to get more performance yourself. All good. And the second flag just here is um, just for direct 2D uh, interoperability. So you need this particular um, pixel format, blue, green, red, alpha support, if you want to write direct 2D interoperability. And we might later on, so we'll use that. Uh, if you just if you want to know the other flags, just go to the... Um, right click and go to definition so some of the other ones that are interesting maybe you want to disable the gpu timeout yeah so it, it, after two seconds if your gpu hasn't responded um, usually in graphics uh, the driver would just reset so you might want to disable that uh, debuggable you might want to do some debugging anyway a bunch of other options there but we'll just stick to these two flags okay so the next parameter is the feature levels. Okay, so the feature levels. Well, we're going to make a little array at the top here of feature levels. So you select this in a slightly strange way. 
uh, you make a little array of the feature levels that you want to support. So direct 3D. Oops. Um, start with the best feature level. So the DirectX 11.1 uh, feature level is the latest. And then work your way down. So we might want to support DirectX 10.1 and DirectX 10.0. Uh, you can support DirectX 9 as well if you want. So what's going to happen is the driver is going to come and look at this uh, list just here and it's going to query the graphics device in your computer yeah, and ask it if it's capable of the first element in the array, uh, DirectX 11.1. And if it is, then it'll select that as the feature level. If it's not, then the driver will ask the graphics card if it's capable of the next element in the array. Yeah, so it'll just go through this array one at a time. So you really want the best feature level, the latest feature level that you can possibly support as the first element in this array. Good stuff. And then the parameter down here is uh, is just that array itself. Uh, the next parameter is the number of items in that array. So we can just use array size for this. Good stuff. Uh, the next element or the next parameter is the SDK version. So we want um, D3D11 SDK. Um, the SDK version that you've got installed in your machine, that's like that's software that you've installed. The DirectX 3D uh, SDK, Software Development Kit, is not necessarily the same as the hardware that your uh, machine supports. Yeah, so yeah, try not to get too confused between feature level here, which is more to do with what the hardware is capable of, and the SDK uh, level, which is more to do with what software you've got installed. And the next one is a swap chain description. Okay, so this is a pointer to our swap chain description that we spent uh, a lot of time making last time. I'll just uh, copy that and uh, put him down here. That's got to be an ampersand. Got to pass that by address for unknown reasons. Um, then we've got the swap chain. Okay, so now we'll start making our our actual objects. I will move this. Uh, I'll move these. Uh, I'll move these outside eventually, but. Um, what it's called but for now we'll just put them above it's like ID 3d something swap chain IDXGI swap chain all oh, these names IDXGI swap chain okay so you supply this as a space why did you type space <laughs> why did I type space um, okay, you supply these um, objects as uh, addresses to your pointers because this function just here returns an H result. Uh, HR. Yeah, so all going to plan, if this function here creates our device context and swap chain, these pointers will be updated to point to the newly created device and swap chain and whatever. Oops, that's why you got to supply them by their address. Um, what's the next parameter? A device. Okay, so we want a device as well. I've got to remember to actually read the name because I can never remember them. Uh, ID 3D11 device. All right. ID 3D11 device. And ampersand device. What's the next parameter? Feature level. Um, okay, so this is another feature level parameter. I'll call it I'll call it selected feature level and I'll just copy that down here and put an ampersand beside it it's got to be passed by reference as well when the driver and the graphics card agree on one of these feature levels uh, we often want to know which one was actually selected so that's what this parameter is for yeah we'll have a we'll have a look in a moment when we run the uh, program to see which uh, which feature level my hardware is capable of and then we've got a device context. Okay, so I'll just put ampersand context. And that's the last parameter. ID 3D11 device context. There we go. Okay, and we're done. So that's the whole function called just there. Pretty complicated stuff. Now, I might also copy these outside of this function because we don't actually want them to be... Uh, local to that function. We want them to be global to our application. So I'll put them right at the top. 
right up there. And the other thing that I'll do just before we hit run is uh, make a clean up function. So if you come down here after your main message loop, um, just put a call to clean up like that. And I'll make this function down here. So all of the um, direct X objects that start with this I, these com interface objects that start with I, um, they should be released. You know, they're they're consuming resources in the in the hardware, and and you should release them when your application closes. So we better do that. Just copy those down here, and we'll say uh, if that then swap chain release. And the same for the device, and the same for the context. Yeah, that way we've released all of our resources when our app closes. I think they'll start set to zero. I'm not sure. Maybe we should. Maybe we should uh, explicitly set them to zero before we actually call that function. So I'll, I'll set them to zero just here, uh, just so that we know what they are. I mean, they might actually start as some random value. I'm pretty sure they start as zero though. Anyway, just to be safe. Okay, now we're ready to run the function. So I might just put a breakpoint uh, right here at show window so that we can see if all went well. No, all did not go well. Cleanup is not found. You need a prototype at the top. There. Um, okay, I'll get rid of the breakpoint there. I might actually set it at the bottom of this init direct 3D function just here. I'll just say int b equals two, so I can set a breakpoint there. That's um, that's not a you know, not, probably not a good programming habit. Okay, so our direct our create device and swap chain function was called. It returned s ok, which is good news. And the feature level that it selected on my machine was DirectX 11 or Direct 3D 11. Yeah, the second one here. So my hardware is not capable of DirectX 11.1. Uh, good stuff. Okay, so next time we might talk about um, setting up a render target view, which is very, very exciting. We're getting closer and closer to actually rendering something. Um, anyway, I hope that was uh, enjoyable and informative, and I want you to have a really good day. Adios.